If it's got carrot top in it, you know what a good name for it would be? What's that, Norm? Box office poison. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 279. It is sometime in September 2021. I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. Yeah, starting with the the date, I guess. But yes, (laughs) and so many things we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Yes, 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 yes. So we skipped last week. Um, I just wanted to touch on going to a WWE house show real quick. Which I did. Uh, uh, go to a WWE house show if they're in your neighborhood, and uh, just just skip the TV tapings. <laughs> Tons of fun. Um, always fun to see who works hard on these shows and who doesn't. Um, always fun to. Yeah, that's that's about all I got. It was a fun show. And you did get Becky, right? After all, even though she wasn't yes. originally. Yes. Yes. Uh she t- played heel very convincingly. At one point she's beating up Bianca Belair and uh the crowd starts to turn on Becky. And uh she goes, Is this your girl? Is this your girl? Talking about Bianca. And then she goes, Is this your girl or am I your girl? Except with a thick Irish accent and <laughs> uh, with like my lip quivering and I tugged on my uh, the man shirt. I'm like, You're my girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think she uh, she didn't hear you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she heard me. No. Oh, oh, shucks. <laughs> so it's your fault. She's turning heel because of the fans. I was trying to illustrate that that is not, in fact, the case. But uh, my complaints fell on deaf ears. But I think she... most crowds have illustrated that that's not the case until the point <laughs> that she starts begging for them to boo her. Yes, there's very much the thing where uh, people are are going to go along with it, but uh, nobody wants to boo her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit of swimming upstream. Yeah. She and Bianca are going to kill it on Sunday, though, at the pay-per-view. Uh, they had a great match. And it was their first house show match. So there's they, uh, they've since run it back all over the world. Um, they toured the UK this week. So, yeah, I'm fully confident that they're going to steal the show on uh, Sunday at Extreme Rules, uh, which we can get into. Um, feels like talking WWE is less the less the thing. Uh, AEW feels like a much hotter promotion right now, and they ran um, Dynamite and Rampage in front of the largest crowd in their history this week. Questionable booking aside, what did you think of uh, AEW Dynamite Grand Slam? Yeah, I thought it was a really special environment for a show. It's 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 you don't see. I remember thinking about this when uh, you and I were both in attendance at the the first Dynamite, which was I guess fourteen or fifteen thousand people at that point. Um, and I remember just thinking, it's like, wow, I don't know that I've ever been in an arena where everyone is just so freaking jazzed to be here before. And that's sort of the impression I got just watching on TV. Like that's a show where I was like, if, if money were no object and if I could just drop everything and go to New York on a dime with a few hours notice, I was like, wish I could have been there. Like that's one of those shows where you're like, I bet being there was especially cool, but as a television show, it was, I thought obviously the, the Danielson, you had the Danielson Omega match. This is, you know, the best, probably the best television match of the year and was uh, was a happening as they say you had a great punk promo you had sting doing sting stuff like it was a uh, it was a really good show like i i think yeah there's booking things you question there's certainly some lulls to the show involving brian pillman jr god bless him and and i didn't think the main event was particularly good either but you know, overall, it felt like a pretty celebratory atmosphere, like it was a big party. And, you know, there was there was variety in what they presented to their uh, to their audience as well. 
There was certainly that. How meta is the thing where Cody Rhodes is going to uh, unwittingly, or he's a baby face in his own mind, but it's going to be a heel? Is that like, is that like <laughs> the people? The people seem to have turned him, but in his own mind, uh, he's going to continue on with his character, which is somehow jumped the shark, even though he's never on TV. Yeah, I don't know what it was about this. Like, there's been one or two other shows where he got light booze, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe one of the the Agogo match, and maybe like they did a ladder match when they were still at, at Daly's place that wasn't a full crowd and he got some booze. But this was like, you know, 18 of the 20,000 people or 19,000 people that were there were booing him. Like, 18,000 mm-hmm. of the 19,000 there were, were booing this guy. <laughs> and they booed his wife. <laughs> yeah, they, I don't know what they did with Arn. Arn fell off the ring at one point. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really interesting reaction. And they did like, they had close ups on his face of him like acknowledging and looking and nodding at the crowd as they were booing him. So, like, and I know it's one of those things where you can never tell if this is a person that has any self awareness or not. He's kind of one of those guys. <laughs> where he has talked in the past about how he feels like his character can be whatever. And he doesn't, if he's going against the baby face, he doesn't feel like he needs to make a dramatic turn and say, now I'm evil. And obviously that's somewhat il- illustrated in the very unsubtle way uh, in, in which that he uh, comes out of the middle. He doesn't come out of the heel tunnel or the baby face tunnel. He comes out in the middle, a true centrist <laughs> and, uh, and but but then he has yeah he has this garish over the top entrance and i think because he is also management people are were eventually even though i don't think it's a completely fair comparison people are going to remember the reign of terror that was triple h's time on top or jeff jarrett's time on top and there's there's a lot of things about Cody Rhodes as a person that I think make him fun to boo. <laughs> so like, yeah, I like I don't know that we're going to see a dramatic turn where he does this. You fans can stick it, brother. But right. yeah, I think I think and I also think on the babyface side, they got a lot of guys that he can go with on go go against uh, as a as a even if it's not an official heel turn that he can work with and get booed against. So, yeah, I mean, if the fans are ready to boo him, go ahead. Yeah, to your, to your point about Brian Pillman Jr., does it feel like he should be a little bit better than he is? You know, <laughs> you th- I, I know he hasn't been wrestling all that long, considering. He, he's, he seems like a very nice kid. It's amazing he's not a murderer. Like... If oh, sure. You, if you watch the dark side of the ring about his family and about specifically his father, but also about the, you know, the childhood that he had post his father's death and all that, like, it's amazing that he and his, you know, his two sisters are, are not in an asylum or something like they had a very rough upbringing. He came to the decision to become arrested late in life, but yeah, he's not like a particular, he doesn't appear to be like a particularly gifted athlete. <laughs> Right. And, you know, again, he tries. He seems like he tries real hard. I think a tag team is maybe the best use of him. And maybe that's why they've stuck him in one. Um, And maybe a 12 minute singles match on the biggest show in the company's history was maybe not the place for him. Uh, But I guess they wanted to have uh, MJF on the show. Um, And so they just picked a guy out of a hat that he could beat. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not knocking. He seems like a very, 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 very likable young man. So, mm-hmm. and uh, he still has time. He's still, he's, I don't think he's 25 yet. Like, he'll, he's pretty young. He'll get better. He'll get better. But it feels like maybe he should be a little bit better than he is already here. <laughs> uh, Sting, Sting killed it on the show. 62 years old. And, you know, he didn't look 25 on the show, but one of the better 62 year old wrestlers there has ever been. Yeah. I mean, barring like, you know, Negros Casas or some of these like 60 year old luchadors that are out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, as far as a, a, you know, an American wrestler. Yeah. This is uh, 
one of the great 60 plus performances I, I can certainly uh, think of. Um, yeah, he was great. He, he wrestled in the t-shirt because he knew if he took the shirt off, it would whip the crowd into too much of a frenzy and it would hurt the women's main event. <laughs> and the, the feminist icon was not going to let that happen. So he wrestled in the shirt and, uh, <laughs> and yes. yeah, they had a very good match. It was, it was funny because most of the time I'm like, he he stands to the side sometimes literally but so much of the the pairing with darby has been stings here but it's mostly about darby and this match was sting wrestled most of the match and it was kind of all about him fighting against the odds and him getting double teamed and they weren't doing complicated spots but they were doing things that were like pretty like bang bang where you know, Sting goes to the corner and hits, uh, you know, knocks wild or off the, I can't remember their FDR names. I'm sorry, but the, the one, the one with hair, hair <laughs> FDR off the apron and then bald FTR runs at him in the corner and neat. And then the ref pulls off uh, bald FTR. And then while the ref's distracted hair FDR grabs him and, you know, necks him on the ropes and then bald FDR runs and rolls him up for a two count. Like, they were doing a lot of like quick bang bang stuff. And then obviously he pulls out like a cross body off the top rope and, and all this crazy stuff. Like he was, he was just darn great for, for what he was. And other than the opener, I think it was the loudest. And obviously we haven't, we haven't seen the rampage yet. We're recording this on a, on a Thursday evening before that show airs, but that was like the loudest and happiest that crowd, which was very loud and happy for most of the night but there were few louder or happier moments for that crowd than when sting was doing his thing. Yep. I was concerned about the timing of the show because figured Omega and Danielson were going to go to a draw and they did figured they could have gone 20 minutes. Cause that's typically like their TV TV time limit uh, is 20 that they announced, but they went 30 and uh, but they uh, they timed the show out pretty well, which is not been a historically a strong suit for this promotion. Yeah, if anything, like I was like, maybe you could have shaved a few minutes off the MJF match and put another like quick promo segment or something in there. Like it's very rare that I think, oh, there should be another segment you know, right. on an AEW show. It's usually pretty jam packed. But yeah, everything uh, had time to breathe and. Uh, obviously the, you know, the women got a good amount of time for that main event and every, yeah, every, nothing felt particularly rushed or like anyone was like, Oh, this, these guys went too long. We got our kind cut. Like nothing felt, yeah, nothing felt particularly rushed or, or off about the show. Um, what did you think about Megan and Daniels and Danielson? Yeah, I think it's one of the, I think it's the best television match I've seen all year. And you know, it's weird because it's like it's the best match I've seen since two weeks ago in that cage match. You know, <laughs> like it's right. there's been a lot of good wrestling this year. Um, so it's, it's a good problem to have. I don't I don't like to get into was, you know, is this the best television match of the last decade. I don't know if you think it was. It was. But right. I, I mean, I would say, yeah, this is in the upper echelon of television matches that I have watched, especially once I've watched live. But yeah, I would put this up there with those great shield six man tags or yeah, Brett and one, two, three kid or uh, uh, Cena and Punk had a banger on, on a raw a couple you know, a decade ago or so. Like there's yeah, it was a really, really great, excellent, as perfect as you could get considering the finish. I mean, that's I guess that's the one thing that people will look back to is, is this going to hold up on rewatch when? Theoretically, they'll have other matches that will maybe have a more satisfying conclusion in the future. Sure. You know, Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson has been waiting six years or however long it's been since Okada took that dragon suplex off the off the top rope, <laughs> the dragon superplex. Mm -hmm. He's been waiting that long to take a dragon superplex, and he, <laughs> he, he got to do it last night. I never want to see anybody take a dragon suplex off the top rope that's insane that's pretty wild i mean he he flipped over to yes. to his credit he didn't he didn't try <laughs> to land on his shoulder or neck uh, yes. uh like i thought omega took good care of him and and that's the thing like and i think he's talked about that in interviews in the last couple of weeks about how 
you know, if he landed on a, a little bit awkwardly when he got back to Gorilla, Vince would yell at him because he would, he said Vince felt very protective of him. Like his, you know, I'm not under the impression that if he lands on his neck once or even gets one more concussion, it's all over for him. I'm not advocating for him to bump on his neck and head, obviously. Right. So I'm not necessarily like, I don't look at Daniel Bryan as always made of glass, but at the same time, I don't advocate, you know, if you're 20 years old and have a metal skeleton, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> taking a dragon suplex off the top rope, you know, like <laughs> just right. not an advisable thing to do. But yeah, I thought, I thought Omega protected him really well. They did the, the, the soup, the dragon suplex on the ramp. They had those like this, the big like led board ramp and, uh, and Omega t- took all of the impact and then just sort of slid Brian off of him. Yeah. Um, and they, yeah. So I, I guess that was the thing. It's like, yeah, there was one or two moments that were a little bit, Oh my gosh. But I thought they, they per the standards of Kenny Omega and, and Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, they, they played it somewhat safe. And maybe part of that is because this is the first match. And when they get to the point where, you know, Brian Danielson is an insane person and he wanted to do a two hour match with Austin Aries once. Yeah. And then they mm-hmm. called an audible. It was like a two out of three falls match. He wanted the third fall to go in, each fall to go an hour or something. Yes. And then he called an audible at like 25 minutes into the third fall. So I'm like, <laughs> but he's an insane person. And yes. I think he still really wants to wrestle for two hours once in his life. Yes. I think it's going to happen in the next two or three years, however long he's there. <laughs> and it'll probably be against Omega. Oh, there are pluses and minuses to that. But yeah, yeah he's going to he's going to try. Uh, AEW Rampage is going to stay on TNT. The TNT championship is not being rebranded. So, and they announced some time ago that the TNT championship is not going to be rebranded. So I think they had an inkling that this, this is going to happen where Dynamite's moving to TBS next year. They're going to have a secondary women's championship and it's going to be the TBS championship and Dynam- and uh, Rampage stays on TNT. So secondary women's title. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's a way to get more women on TV and maybe get more than one. <laughs> if you're someone like me who feels they could have more than one women's storyline going on their shows at once. And, you know, God bless like people that are doing angles and stuff on dark. Um, but I don't watch those shows. So it would be cool if, you know, people like Karoshida and Riho and Serena Deeb and uh, you know, some of these other, some of these other talented people had, you know, had a, had something to do so i'm uh, i am interested in in seeing that and i i hope they they go full board with it all right uh wwe extreme rules coming up this sunday i cannot believe there's pay-per-view this sunday but there is in this economy yes they're going to be in although you don't really have to pay for peacock <laughs> if you have <laughs> xfinity you get some version of Peacock for free. <laughs> so uh, patented TWL Xfinity plug. That's right. So they have three women's matches and three men's matches announced for Extreme Rules. Liv Morgan is wrestling Carmella on pay per view. Feels like this is a storyline that started, I don't know, six months ago, right after WrestleMania, something like that. And it's just kind of been dropped and picked up and dropped and picked up. And now they're going to wrestle on pay-per-view. So good for Liv. Sure. <laughs> That's exciting, I guess. They can do a documentary special and this can be the happy ending. She got a, she got a six-minute match on pay-per-view. <laughs> the, the Usos will be uh, defending the SmackDown tag titles against the Street Profits. I saw... The Usos and Roman wrestle the Street Profits and Bauer in the main event of the house show. And uh, Roman Reigns pinned somebody, I forget. But uh, Bauer couldn't even win uh, the house show. <laughs> the he house show main event. Jim Uso. <laughs> right. That's what they were doing in the Cena matches when Cena was working house shows. It was Cena and the Mysterios against uh, Roman and the Usos, and Cena was pinning one of the Usos. So. I, I expected Bauer was going to pin one of the Usos. Nope, Roman hit Superman punch, pin somebody. I forget who, but 
<laughs> anyway, the Usos defending against the Street Profits. I don't like the Street Profits' chances. Yeah, it feels like it's time to maybe bounce them back to Raw. Like, there's only like four teams, so let's just shake it up, move them, right. move them back to Raw, and they can feud with whoever the tag team champions are on Raw. Uh, RK Bro. By the oh. way, Randy Orton shockingly over. Wow. <laughs> second second biggest reaction on the house show to Roman was Randy Orton far and away. Yeah, I mean, you push a guy for 15 years and then <laughs> yeah. and, and protect him really well. Turns out <laughs> people get into that. Push Orton, yes. <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns is going to be wrestling the Demon. They've already announced Roman's next title defense against Brock Lesnar in Saudi Arabia. So it seems unlikely that the demon is going to beat Roman Reigns. Yeah, seems pretty, uh, pretty unlikely. Um, would this be the, the demon's first job, on, at least on the main roster? I believe so. Yes. So that's something. <laughs> he, got, he got to beat regular Finn and now he gets to beat paint Finn. And, uh, and then we'll just keep chugging along. <laughs> To get to kill the guy's gimmick dad it's great yeah it's great i mean really i mean who somebody needs that boost to being the first guy to beat paint finn i mean need to need to need to really strap the rocket to this roman kid sure why not we're building we're building to that match with the rock that there's like a 12 percent chance ever happens <laughs> just in case <laughs> he's gonna break bruno's record as <laughs> For holding the championship for six years just because they think there might be a chance that Dwayne in between presidential runs or whatever will come and do a match. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte Flair is wrestling Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. They had a terrible match <laughs> at the house show that I went to. <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. Horrible, 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 horrible. That said, is there a stupider hill to die on than was it 700 or 1500 people that walked out <laughs> during the Charlotte Flair Alexa Bliss segment on Raw on Monday? Uh, no. Um, How it, could you possibly quantify that? One of the dumber, one of the dumber pieces of wrestling discourse. Think of the ground that covers. <laughs> yes. Uh, that I can think of in recent times. Um, and the, and you know, <laughs> I don't think there was a survey of why however many people walked out during that segment. So maybe some people were just leaving to beat traffic. Who knows? I don't care. I don't care about this match. I don't care how many people are or are not in attendance for this match. Uh, They pointed out in the promo that people, that Alexa was more interesting when she was an actual wrestler. (laughs) Debatable, (laughs) but like, um, but you know, I, I I'm not a fan of of Lady Fiend, and the feud has mostly been built around dolls. So uh, I don't I don't <laughs> know what to expect. I don't know what to expect. Also, uh, does does Alexa still have magic powers? Was she doing any magic in the match that you saw? I uh, don't know. I mean, I, I don't think they're going to bring out special effects for uh, for the house shows. But, but what about like her hypnosis powers or no, there wasn't any of that. No, okay. she did have her doll with her and seemed to be drawing power from the doll. Okay. So that's I her think. urn. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I, ca- I cannot underscore enough how horrible their match was. <laughs> <laughs> like, so just like, so there wasn't a lot of BS. It's just the work was bad. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that doesn't bode well. But again, it was a house <laughs> show. Maybe they'll they'll really put the working boots on uh, for for the pay per view. And it was the first house show in like a month, so it was the first time they were having the match. Yeah, but ugh. <laughs> it was really really bad. I mean, Alexa wasn't a super worker when she was a full time wrestler, and she hasn't been a full time wrestler for like two years now. Yeah, it's been quite a while. Yeah, it, but it's not like she was dreadful or anything. No, no, she. I mean, she could have good matches. She had, yes, you know, she had good matches with Sasha at the very least, and maybe had a good one. I think she had a good match with Bailey, but then they also had one of the worst matches I've ever seen. So yes, but I, yeah. I blamed the gimmick, uh, the stipulation uh, for that more than the yes, than the work of the ladies involved. Yes, 
All right. Also at Extreme Rules, the United States champion, Damian Priest, will be defending in a triple threat against Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. So we really got like we got like three eras here. We got the yeah, the Attitude <laughs> Era and Jeff. We got the what do we call the twenty the twenty tens era? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. The anonymous GM era. The Nexus era. <laughs> the been. core era. Should have been yeah. The core with two R's. Uh, anyway, whatever we call Seamus's era, yeah. and then and now the the new era uh, of of Damian Priest, yeah. fresh faced thirty six year old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll probably all hit each other really hard. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I saw uh, Priest wrestled Seamus on the house show, and they beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> yeah, that, they've done that match on television. It was good, and then. Jeff and Seamus have wrestled a thousand times, but they all, somebody almost always nearly dies or gets busted open when they wrestle. So that could be fun. Sure. It, unpredictable. And then uh, Becky and Bianca for the SmackDown women's title the draft is coming up next week. So somebody who shouldn't get beat is going to get beat and <laughs> probably, probably switch brands is my, my takeaway from, from this, but um, they will probably have a good match. Also interesting, new WWE heavyweight champion, Big E, not on this show. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah, there was a, what was there was one of the last pandemic shows, Roman. They just did the Roman Ray match on TV and then Roman didn't wrestle on a show. So I guess they just there's like a minimum amount of trying. <laughs> I suppose it, that was a hell in a cell, too. Right. right that's right yeah <laughs> that, that, they moved that to the smackdown and then uh and then did just didn't didn't book roman in another match the pay-per-view so i guess that's a, a version of this they we, we again we didn't do a show last week but biggie tweeted out on monday afternoon that he was cashing in and then he cashed in and won it was a great moment and then he got beat twice on monday <laughs> Really strapping the rocket to him. So bad at this. <laughs> so bad at everything. God. <laughs> That's why it's like night and day. We're going going to a house show and seeing all the wrestlers appearing to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you watch the TV and it's like, man, who on who besides Paul Heyman is having fun <laughs> as a performer? <laughs> But yeah, now that Bailey's off TV, um, <laughs> right? Um, John Morrison looks like he's having fun sometimes. That's true. Yes. Um, Johnny Jerp Jerp is a hero. Reggie, <laughs> that might be it. Yeah, yeah. There's very few people that look like they're having fun. Yeah, poor Big E. You know, he'll be fine. He'll he'll be fine. He's uh he's short, but he's he's a large man. So yeah. I, I took the ending. What well, was interesting, so, the, so they lose the six-man. Obviously, Big E didn't get pinned. Right. Then they have Lashley run out there, and they set up the main event, and they just do Big E, Lashley, and Roman. And I and I figured, well, Big E will pin Lashley again. And then, because you're going to, because you want to build some intrigue for the Survivor Series, which I assume will be Big E versus Roman. And then Roman just won. <laughs> Roman pinned Lashley, which also put a kibosh on what I thought maybe they were setting up because they had Lashley lay out Roman at the start of the show, too. I'm like, oh, maybe they're going to move Lashley to SmackDown and he's going to be a baby face. And like, I've heard of worst ideas, like just let him be a, you know, a Goldberg type and just run through everybody and be a big, scary baby face monster. Like, that would be fine. You could you could get a couple months out of him and Roman. Sure. Um, but then Roman pinned him. So I don't know what they're doing. And maybe they don't either. <laughs> No, they're advertising for SmackDown here uh, locally next week. They're advertising uh, Roman and Drew as a dark match. Ugh. I think Drew is switching over to SmackDown. He's and... having a real 1995 Brett type <laughs> year. Like since he lost that belt. Yeah. Just like feuding with whoever's left. It's just like, yep. all right, I guess I'll wrestle gender for three months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like Roman and Drew is going to be. Uh, the fall program over on SmackDown. I don't know what they're doing with Big E on Raw. <laughs> no idea. Well, they get a month off from having to try when they do the Survivor <laughs> Series. So, and then it's just, and then you just got the December show where they also don't try very hard. 
So, you know, you get you'll you'll get some rematches. Maybe if Lashley stays put, you just do rematches with him and Big E through January. And then, uh, you know, yeah, you do Roman and Drew through January. Sure. Why not? <laughs> why not? It doesn't matter. Hey, Raw uh, beat uh, Dynamite by Whisker after Dynamite uh, beating Raw two weeks in a row in the demo. I know you don't like doing ratings talk, but <laughs> seems to feel significant. I mean, I saw it as interesting when like when Variety does the story about AEW and mentions that in the story and like when the the Hollywood elites are taking notice of it and are mentioning it. It's like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Maybe people in the if 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 AEW does nothing else but lets people in the world of television begin to understand that people not named Vince McMahon can produce major league wrestling television shows, then yes. that's good. So, so that, that I think is maybe the most, yeah. Like it's not, it's not super relevant to was the show good. Did you enjoy the show? Like that kind of thing. It doesn't interest me, but it's interesting in the sense that, yeah, maybe it will change the perception of how the television industry has largely viewed wrestling for the last <laughs> three decades. Yes. Yes. Uh, New Japan, the G1 has started, which is why my life is <laughs> just an absolute disaster for the next month. Uh, Tetsuya Naito wrestled one time and uh, has to miss the rest of the tournament because he's 39 years old and it's held together with duct tape and athletic tape at this point. It's Perfect. just... It's just the war of attrition in the in yeah in the cursed promotion that uh, has no understanding of the rules of supply and demand and just keeps supplying even though there's no demand and uh, yeah so Naito's out of the G1. Zack Saber Jr. has tapped out Naito and Shingo Takagi so far, the uh, New Japan's world champion. So Saber's probably going to get a title match against Shingo sometime this fall. Or maybe on one of the three Wrestle Kingdom shows. <laughs> it's po- it's possible. I I took it as a uh, power struggle in November, mm-hmm. but but yes, the, the number the number of Wrestle Kingdoms <laughs> will continue to multiply until morale improves. <laughs> so uh, have you caught any G one yet? I think there's been some good matches, but. I would say Okada and Tanahashi is, is legitimately great. But aside from that, a lot of, a lot of really good, not a lot of great. Yeah, I haven't caught much. I've seen some highlights. I will make a point to watch Okada and Tanahashi because that's never a bad time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Like, I, I, I've tried to, I've plugged into the big shows going, uh, you know, for New Japan this year and, They've had some really good wrestling on it. It's tough. It's you never, I didn't necessarily think, or I wouldn't have thought pre pandemic that the crowd, while I knew it was important to a new Japan show, they don't cheer and boo the way, you know, an American wrestling crowd does. So I, maybe I undermined like how uh, important, like, raucous like oh noises are <laughs> yes <laughs> to new japan matches and now that the crowd which is you know they're being disciplined and although maybe one could argue they're not being disciplined because they're coming to a show during a pandemic with a country that doesn't have a very high vaccination rate oh. but um you know they they're asked not to make noise to and and you know to, to, so there's just like light applause <laughs> Yes, Tep- tepid applause in yes. empty buildings. Well, that's the other thing too. It's you know, it's it's very small and spread out crowds. So it's just yeah. You, it turns out that even though I would have thought, if you asked me what promotion would be hurt the least by not having a crowd or not having a loud crowd, I maybe would have said uh, New Japan coming into this pandemic. But yeah, it turns out that's a pretty important ingredient. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, I will still go out of my way to see the top matches, and obviously, once we get to the finals, that's that's still bi- that still feels big and important. But it's also you're looking around, and you're like, gosh, I guess it's like you're looking at a finals of like Zack Saber Junior. and somebody maybe, and 
I was just like, okay, uh, I don't know. Like, it's, it's just, and and before we get there, it's like, boy, there's a lot of Yujiro matches to get through to get there. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ball club guys in this tournament. A lot of Great oh. Ocon. Yes, the Great Ocon sits atop his block. <laughs> If well, there's a pot, if it's not a, called the pretty good Ocon, you know, it's called the great Ocon. He should be the fine Ocon. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, I mean, if there's good news, it's Japan has now passed the United States in vaccination rate. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I mean, I so think most countries have <laughs> that I mean, or have access to the, the vaccination. So that's that's better. That's like hopefully they're treading in the right direction then. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely an improvement over the summer. So, yeah, but again, with G1, if a guy doesn't get hurt, there's still the chance that he could be pulled from like three shows because he has a fever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like the whole thing. And they, pre- because Naito pulled out of the tournament after one match, they preemptively gave all of his future opponents their two points for forfeit wins already. And mm-hmm. it's like, I would hold off on that. <laughs> Yeah, I would hold off on that until we know that everybody's going to make it through this tournament. <laughs> yeah, we might be counting our chickens uh, <laughs> before they're hatched as far as who uh, who makes it to them. We might have a final of, you know, <laughs> Tai Chi. Koji- and <laughs> yeah, Kojima might end up in the final somehow. <laughs> you never know. Right. So, yeah, it's, you know, I, it's tough. I feel for all those guys and some of them are the best wrestlers on planet earth and it's it's tough to see them continually walking out in front of these quiet sparse yes. crowds but especially when you look at some of the guys that are getting older and you're like well they probably don't have that many more years of like this tippy top high level uh style that they work it's like man that's well, f- fingers crossed. Fingers crossed yeah. we're closer to the end of that than the beginning. Not sure that we are, but yes. <laughs> fingers we crossed. Can, we can hope for that. Yes. All right. Any, sorry. Anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that's uh, that about wraps up the, the big three. The G1 <laughs> Grand Slam and whatever else we talked about. The house show you went to. The big three. Yeah. Extreme rules. We talked about that. Right. Ten minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> gonna be a great show <laughs> although to to both of our credit uh, I think we both may have, may have passed away briefly during that segment <laughs> alright uh, until next time everybody I'm Ethan and I'm Liam we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling of life adios Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. The skeleton ran out of shampoo in the shower. (laughs) The human torch was denied a bank loan. (laughs) Oh, the best. Yeah. They don't, they don't just let him just do, sh- do shtick <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you know, I feel like that time has passed. It's like, no, you don't. We don't. We don't let. We're not just going to film for like 10 hours and then cut it down to a two hour movie with whatever the best improv was. <laughs> right. Right. Well. You know, as the years go on, like no one, I think, in the history of the planet has ever made me laugh the way Will Ferrell has made me laugh as often as Will Ferrell has made me. Yeah, decade, a little, a little mm-hmm. iffy. Yeah, I, I also just at a certain point stopped seeing all of the movies he's <laughs> in, so it's maybe not fair for me to judge like the one sure. where, where him and Amy Poehler are like parents and they run a fight club or something i don't know i don't know what that one was about um or that's what uh, i actually wanted to see or the, then, but didn't yeah or the kevin hart one or the the sherlock holmes movie with braun Strowman, or yeah like I, I sort of I went saw on bo- in life yeah i saw both of those can't can't recommend mm. 
Does Allison Brie play his wife in a movie? Yes. That's... And they just don't, they never acknowledge the fact that she's like 30 and he's like 50 in the movie. Right. Or that, you know, <laughs> she looks like that and he looks like that. <laughs> I guess that's kind of a throwback to like when Arnold would be in a movie in like the nineties and he's like, and it's like, this guy's name is Bob Anderson and he's an architect. And you're like, what? (laughs) He's an architect. Come on. (laughs) Like, like the fact that like he's walking down a street and not everyone's not just like turning around and looking at this giant hulking monstrosity down the street. It's like, that's didn't really have, Someone look, somebody play in every man, but I guess you for movie magic sometimes you pretend. Yes, yes, he is a tiny little jacked up dude, though. Arnold's like five, five, eight or something, but fair, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, not didn't mean to shit on your point, <laughs> the point I mean, still stands. Yes, he's <laughs> just a very large man. <laughs> That screams in a very thick Austrian accent. You're like, you can't, this can't just be like, like if that guy showed up at a parent teacher conference, everyone would be like, what? No, where's his real dad? Like, come on. You're not Jake Lloyd's father. Right. Exactly. Well, anyway, that's my, my riff on. on All right. Good time. Un- unconvincing movie roles. Good times. Have you seen the uh, commercials for um, Catholicism and bowling? No. <laughs> These are two separate commercials, but <laughs> there's one. There's a commercial that's just like, you should go bowling. And then there's another one that uh, is just like, so you should try having faith and being a Catholic. That's. These are just currently on television. Yes. Yeah. During uh, baseball games. Yes. Huh. I mean, local, you always got like the, the archdiocese of Maryland or whatever, do, starring, starring our pal, Jim Hunter, but <laughs> that's at least actually going after, you know, promoting a specific church or denomination, I guess, as opposed to just being like, you know, <laughs> well, well in, in, in the spirit of crapping on each other's uh, jokes, uh, it is an archdiocese of Baltimore commercial, oh. but <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't uh, yeah you don't know that until the final like the final frame of the commercial when they show the logo. Other than ah. that, it's just like Catholic. It's kind of like those Freemason okay. commercials where it's like Ugh. you know <laughs> leaders. Stone, yes. pyramids, <laughs> shaking Swords. hands, shaking hands at a business meeting. Yes, and then it's just Freemasons. <laughs> yes, I never, I've n- never been able to crack what that is. Besides a weird white guy cult. Yeah, like it's. I was like, is it the same as Mensa? Is it like supposed to be like a smart guy crew? Like I know the. They're like the conspiracy theory of like they've they're like a secret society that controls most of the world. Um, but sure. I don't I don't know what they actually like purport to be. Yeah, I don't really know either. Apparently it involves swords, so though. <laughs> <laughs> Stone. <laughs> oh we get enough shtick here. I think so. <laughs> All right, good. I try to keep on keeping on.